Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS using .NET. Today we're going to talk about a question that I was actually asked in a conference talk I gave in the last week and that question was around language and how you manage when different domains or different services within your application have the different names for the same thing. Now, ordinarily, if you're practicing something like domain-driven design, you would try and get a ubiquitous language across um, across your application. But in some instances, that's not always the case. And in some instances, the correct language to use in a certain domain of your business may mean that it differs from bounded context to bounded context within your application. So what we're going to look at is how, the, how you can manage this in an event-driven serverless context. And to set the scene here, we've got two um, services or two domains in our application. We've got a customer service that allows um, customers to be created. This is a really simple, just a post API endpoint where we receive a request into the API. This is a create customer request. We create a new customer. And then we just publish an event to say there's been a new customer created. And that customer created event just has a customer ID. That's the only property of that event. Within our application, we also have the context of memberships, either membership domain or service. And the membership service needs to do a few different things. Whenever a new customer gets created, the memberships need to assign some membership points and create the actual membership. It needs to send out a welcome email to say, welcome to your loyalty program or whatever. And then it needs to actually update some internal analytics within the service. So initially you might think this is really straightforward, right? We publish the events to EventBridge. So our customer service, um, the event publisher in this case, is just gonna send events out to EventBridge. Um, and then in our membership service, we just have all of our membership services all just listen to events from EventBridge using that same customer created event structure. Now there's a couple of challenges that this brings about. Um, the first of which is we've now got some conflicting language here because our customer event has got the idea of a customer ID and a customer, whereas within our membership domain, we are calling this a member. So a customer is a member and a member is a customer. And this is quite a common problem we see in software design. So now we've got our business logic in our membership service is also coupled to these terminology that doesn't really make sense to this part of the application, customers and customer IDs. The other challenge we've got is we've actually created a really tight coupling here without us meaning to. Because if, for example, our customer created service was to for some reason change the schema of their event. Let's say they change the event property name from customer ID to cust ID, for example. Well, now that's gonna affect all, all of the different parts of our membership service. All three of these event subscribers all now need to change because of something completely outside of our control. And this is where the concept of anti-corruption layers gets really important. And I'm actually going to read the, the, um, the intention of an anti-corruption layer from the seminal book on the topic of domain different design. But an anti-corruption layer creates an isolating layer to provide clients with functionality in terms of their own domain model. Now that's really important because that's introducing some kind of adapter layer that's adapting these interfaces with external systems and translating them into something that our domain understands. So how can we actually go about implementing that in this system? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go off to my file system and I'm just gonna duplicate one of these existing um, Lambda functions. They've already got the EventBridge integration and all the code set up, so we'll use that as a starting point. And we'll call this membership customer created adapter because this is going to adapt to that event that comes in from the customer created and adapt that to our membership system and I'll just rename the CS proj file as well and then I will come in here and I can add the project to this solution so we'll add this customer created adapter 
No, nope, don't add the function.cs. That is not going to work, James. Instead, add the CS project file, customer created adapter. And there we are. We've now got this customer created adapter project in our um, in our function. So we've received this new customer created event, and we know now that this event schema, currently at least, has this customer ID property. Let's just remove, rename that namespace and we'll rename that namespace as well. Okay, so what do we want to do with this event? So this event comes in from EventBridge, and EventBridge is the central event bus that all of our services can publish to. But now we know what this kind, we know what this type of event is, so we can get a bit more granular here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm now going to publish this translated event to SNS. So we'll get the NuGet package for SNS. We've got simple notification service. We will install that there. So now that we've got that installed, what we can now create is a private Amazon simple notification client when IntelliSense catch up. Amazon simple notification service client. There we are, and we've got our SNS client. And then in our constructor, we can initialize that SNS client. Okay, so now we've got our SNS client. So we've got this new customer created event that comes in. And now we actually want to publish an event um, that's relevant to the membership service. So we will create a new class. And I'm going to call this new customer created event received. Events are immutable, events are in the past, we've received this event. And I'm gonna make this a little bit of a trivial example, but instead I'm gonna um, call this, for example, member customer ID, because now this is, this is something that's relevant to the membership domain. So we've got our customer created event that comes in and we can delete all that code that was already there. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna await sns.client.publish async I'm going to publish it to a topic name that's going to be in an environment variable in my Lambda function. And the contents of this is going to be a new customer created event received. And we'll set the member customer ID to the input event dot detail dot custom dot detail dot customer ID. Okay, and then we just need to serialize that JSON dot JSON serializer dot serialize and we've got a new customer ID there. Okay, so this all this um, all this is gonna do now is it's gonna receive the event from EventBridge and then translate that to an event that we is is relevant to this domain. Okay, so now we just need to make a couple of changes to our, our functions that are already here. So the functions that already exist are of course listening to EventBridge, but we now need to switch them to listen to SNS. So I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna add the Amazon Lambda SNS events package. Um, and then we need to update this function to actually take in an SNS event. And we've got our input event. So now that we've got this input event, now we can actually then this is again an event schema that is now in our control. It's in the control of our service. So we can just do a JSON convert serializer.deserialize. Just for the simplicity here, I'm just going to copy that entire class creation. Ordinarily, I would recommend moving this into some kind of shared class library. Um, just for the minute, we'll just duplicate that event received. And then we need to create a new customer event received. And we're going to serialize, deserialize the input event. Um, oh, of course, the input event's coming as a record. So then we need to do a for each um, input event record because SNS comes in as a batch uh, SNS event. And then we'll see serialize our SNS event dot SNS dot message. Okay, and now we've got our event payload then we can actually go off and do that um, creation.
definition from our event payload and our event payload dot member customer id now we're using also ubiquitous language across this membership service so i'm just going to go off now and duplicate this same code across my other three functions okay so i've been through now and tidied up the code in all of these different services so all of these separate functions now that are performing these separate pieces of business logic in our membership domain are now working from this customer created event received event um, and i've also moved that into a shared library um, again because this is something that's within the control of our domain sharing this event this this class between all of our functions is actually quite sensible so what benefits does this give us now then? So we've now got this single Lambda function, this um, single point of contact, this integration point with our other services. So if this new customer created event that comes from our customer service was to change, all we need to do is change this single Lambda function to just to map that change in schema to a event that our system understands. So we don't actually change the business logic we're not changing any of our existing functions we're not risking changing something and breaking something all we're doing is remapping this schema from this external system to a schema that our domain understands and we're also standardizing standardizing on some of the language here a little bit so the event that comes in from our customer created service has the concept of customers and customer ids when at this point here, we're translating that to a name that our system understands, our domain understands, which is the member customer ID. Again, pretty trivial example, but this is how it is. But this also opens up some other really powerful possibilities because we've now got this integration point. And currently, we're taking events directly from EventBridge and just publishing them straight onto SNS. But what if we were to receive a sudden, unexpected load from the customer service maybe there was um, some kind of ddos on the customer service that generated lots and lots of events in our system well previously that would have overloaded three four separate parts of our system but because we've now got this integration point what we can start to do is actually apply some back pressure here so i'm going to change this instead of taking a um instead of taking an integration directly from EventBridge, I'm actually gonna change my customer created adapter to take a message from SQS. And then what we can do is uh, add a little for each here, and we're gonna loop over our queued message um, in the records from SQS. And we're actually just gonna move this logic into um, SQS here. Um, and then we can uh, update this logic here to be queue message. Um, we need to create our uh, received event equals JSON C realize dot DC realize into a customer new customer created event, and that's going to come from the body of our SQS message. And then we've got this received event that, of course, has the customer ID and that customer ID. So we're now allowing us to apply back pressure to our systems. If we maybe had an outage in our membership service or we receive a sudden unexpected flux of load from the customer service, we can then start to control how that then affects our membership service to not overload the membership service. And we're doing that in one place. We've got one piece of control now. We could set some kind of con concurrency constraints on this adapter function to only allow it to take in customers in batches of 10. And we only do that with 10 at a time. So now we're controlling the load on our membership service. So now we've both got this mapping of the schema, we can handle our schema changes in one place, but we can also handle unexpected load. So let's go off and see this in action now. So if I just flick over to Postman, um, I've got my API endpoint here, um, I can send a post request to that. And you see, I have created a customer with an email address of test at test.com and my name. And I've got back a ID that the, the backend has generated of uh, random GUID. So if I go off to the AWS console now, and first I have a look at the log group for my membership customer created adapter. Remember, this is the thing that's listening to the SQS queue. Um, and if I come into my latest log group, we can see the time now is 17.54 and we have some logs here for my 
um, GUID from our newly generated customer, so B07. If we go back to Postman, we can see that is the same customer ID. And if I now go off to my assign points lambda function, remember these are one of the features of my um, of my membership service, and I can go off in there. And of course, in here, I've also got messages for my same customer ID, B07. So what we've actually got from a console perspective, if I go over to EventBridge now, I've got this single rule on my um, custom EventBridge, and that's routing any customer created events to my membership customer created SQS queue. My um, adapter Lambda function, remember this is the interface layer, the anti-corruption layer is listening for messages from this queue and publishing them to SNS. So if we go and have a quick look at SNS now, um, we see we've got um, a topic called Dev Membership Customer Created Event Topic. And this topic has, of course, our three subscriptions for our update analytics, assign points, and send welcome email lambda function. So what we've done now is we've, we've even we've decoupled this event-driven system either, even further because event-driven architectures do give you some element of decoupling, but you still have a coupling at the schema level. And what we've done now is we've kind of decoupled that schema as well. So we've now got this single anti-corruption layer, this single interface between our um, customer service and our membership service. And you can also add these anti-corruption layers at the producer side as well. And we're going to go into that in our next video with what's called the transactional outbox pattern. How you can manage both committing database to a database at the producer level, but also then publishing an event that other services can, can deal with. Because at the minute, of course, our customer service is publishing a, a domain event, it's publishing this customer created event. Now this is an event that's specific to the domain. At, at this moment in time, the customer service team can't change the schema of this event easily because they're coupled to other systems that might be using it. So how do we add an anti-corruption layer at this end, at the producer end, as well as the consumer end? But that's for next time. If you've enjoyed this video, as always, please like, please subscribe. All of the links to the GitHub repositories are in the code, in the, in the description below. I will see you next time and thank you all for watching.